Okay, let's have a little friendly competition here. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this triangle. Uh, and we're first going to use a formula. And then we're going to uh, compete with calculus. We're going to do this problem uh, using a formula and using uh, calculus. And we're going to see who wins out, which is easier. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now who wins this contest. It's going to be the formula. Using a formula for the area of a triangle right here is far easier than calculus, but we don't want to discount calculus because calculus is just saying, hey, you know what, this is just a little sample problem. Although you might win out, uh, you know, because you got a formula, I can do problems. Mr. Calculus is saying, I can do problems uh, where you can't um, uh, use a formula. And that's really the power of calculus, but we're going to kind of get a little sense of how calculus works by doing this particular problem. Now, if you know what the answer is, if you remember what the formula of an area of a triangle is, you can go ahead and calculate this right now. It's very, very easy to do. It will take you all of about 13 seconds to compute. But um, if you can go ahead and do that, put your answer in the comment section just to kind of see where you're at. Of course, I'm going to do all of this here in a second. But the main idea uh, behind this uh, video is to, you know, one, you know, just review basic uh, area of, you know, like a triangle, of course, you know, we're going to go through that. But really, more importantly, what I'm trying to communicate to you is an introduction to the power of calculus and why calculus is so awesome. So even, uh, you know, if you're only in like in the basic algebra course or maybe you've taken no math, just stick around. You'll I'm pretty sure you'll be able to understand uh, these basic calculations. Do not be intimidated by this word calculus. No need for that. So we're going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But very briefly, um, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything else in between. So if you're in middle school, high school, or even college level mathematics, I could help you pass your courses if you are taking any exam that has math on it. So, for example, the GED, HiSET, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or ALEX exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. Um, there are a ton of exams out there that people have to take that have a math section that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a great comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, well, you need math notes. You can use my math notes. I'm going to leave uh, links uh, to my various math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes. Um, it's critical that you understand, okay, that note-taking is, uh, um, you know, non-negotiable in terms of you learning math, okay? If you're not taking notes, you're doing yourself a serious uh, disservice. I've been, teaching, I've been teaching math for decades. I'm just telling you right now, those students have great math notes, almost always end up looking like this at the end of the year, okay? All right, so let's get into this problem now. Um, if you know the area of this triangle, if you remember that, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. I can do that. Go ahead and put your answer in the comment section because I'm gonna go ahead and show you the answer now. All right, so here is our lovely triangle. Uh, of course, it has a base of three, a height of five, and this is very easy if you remember the formula for the area of a triangle. And here it is right here, area is equal to one half base times height. Again, the base is gonna be three. The height of this triangle is five. So I just go ahead and plug in those respective values. So one half, three times five, that is gonna be one half uh, times 15, or the area of this triangle is 15 over two. And if you got that right, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with a few stars. Very, very good. Um, there's a lot of stuff you get in, when you're learning mathematics. There's a ton of things, you know, formulas and equations and all kinds of stuff that are thrown at you. That's why you have to take notes. But some of this stuff, you know, um, should go into your long term memory. Things like the uh, area of uh, uh, volume, surface area, basic shapes and stuff, I would suggest should go into your long term memory. So if you didn't remember this, well, you know, uh, don't feel so bad. But these are some of the things that you should always remember. Okay, so let's get into calculus now. So we know the answer is 15 over two, and that's super easy if I have the formula. So this is why using a formula for this particular problem is far easier than calculus, but let's check out calculus and uh, get a sense of how we would do the same problem using calculus. Well, first things first, 
I have this line right here, okay, this yellow line. I need to get an equation for this line, okay? So if you are in any kind of algebra uh, class, there is this uh, y equals mx plus b form of a linear equation or a, a equation of a line. So this is called the slope intercept form, okay? And hopefully you're familiar with this. So I can build an equation for this line, but I'm gonna need these two pieces of information. So the first piece of information I'm gonna need is the slope. Now, if you recall, the slope is the rise over the run. That means that for this particular line, it runs out three for every five it goes up, okay? So that is how we define the slope of a line, so the rise over the run. In this particular case, it's gonna be five over three. So that's M, okay, it's five thirds, so that would be right there. And then this B is what we call the Y-intercept. It's where the line is intercepting the Y-axis. So where is this line crossing through the Y-axis? At zero, okay, it's going through at the origin, so my B is zero, okay? So now, this is very easy to actually write the equation of this line. I need to do this first if, I, um, if I'm gonna be using calculus. So let's go ahead and do this now. All right, so here it is. Here's our slope. Uh, again, let me just write this out here. Y equals mx plus b. Our m was 5 thirds and our b is zero, so I end up with this. So this is my linear equation of this line, or I could write this as a linear function. It doesn't make a difference, but um, they're basically describing this line, okay? Now, in calculus, this is the notation that we're gonna use. We're gonna write this little crazy thing like this. I'm gonna explain this fully. Zero to three f of, I'm sorry, um, five thirds x dx, so this little uh, crazy notation right here is going to is basically tell me to find the area of this triangle okay whoops uh, let me highlight this a little bit better okay so this is saying this find the area of that triangle but let's just look at this uh, crazy notation here because this is calculus what does it mean okay well basically this little crazy symbol like this, okay? This is like a stretched out S, okay? Like S, like the letter S. And that stands for sum, okay? So it means add up. This is what we call an elongated S in calculus. It means sum. But like add up what? What are we talking about here? Well, what we're adding up is all these little, tiny little microscopic rectangles. And we can find the area of a rectangle very, very easy with a formula. But if I had like a bazillion million little rectangles underneath this line right here, okay, that went from zero to three, and I added up every little tiny rectangle that was underneath this line, okay? So remember, like a rectangle like this, all right, this is going to be the base times the height. Super easy to find the area of that. So, but the, think of these as little microscopic uh, strips, okay? I can add them up from zero to three. If I do that, you can see I'm gonna get a, the perfect area of the um, of this triangle, okay, formed from zero to three underneath this line here, y equals five thirds x. It's the triangle that we're talking about, the the, the triangle we just found the for, um, the area of, which was 15 over two, okay. So this is what this notation is saying in calculus. We're gonna start from zero, go to three. Now we're ended at three. We're gonna start from zero. We're gonna end at three, and we're gonna find the area of um, we're going to add up uh, the uh, all these little infinite little rectangles here and when I do this this will be the area of that triangle okay so that's effectively what this notation means now this is a very informal way this is not like a formal uh, calculus you know lesson or whatnot so for those of you that are taking calculus and watching this video you're like oh you're not talking about the antiderivative you're not talking about the yeah you listen this is for this is just for the person that's uh, interested in possibly taking calculus one day. We don't need to get all that technical about it. Just trying to give you the general feel of what's going on. All right, so now that we understand that this notation, okay, represents the area of this triangle that we just found um, the area of, what do we do with this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that, how that works, okay? And then once we got this um, figured out, we will have the area. So again, the area is gonna be zero, two, three, here's our function 
5 thirds x that describes that line and this will give us the area okay so now we got to figure out what to actually uh, do with this what are the steps uh, that we need to take well we got to get this thing out of this uh, integral this is called an integral in calculus we're going to have to do something with that and now I'm going to show you what we do with that in calculus all right so here it is what we're going to do I want you to focus in on this x right there okay now x is what power of x is that okay so hopefully you're saying, oh, that's x to the first power. You would be correct. We don't need to write that, okay? It's just there. It's not x squared. It's not x cubed. It's just x. But really, there's a little 1 up there. So in calculus, okay, when you um, uh, want to find the integral, okay, that's, or integrate, this is what we're doing here, what we're going to do, there's a lot of different rules depending on uh, the function that you're dealing with. But this particular case, it's super easy. The rule, the procedure is you're just going to add 1 to whatever power that is. So if this was 3, 2, it doesn't make a difference. You always add 1 to that power. So in this case, it's going to be 1 plus 1. That's going to be uh, what we're going to be doing. Okay, 1 to that power. So what, uh, what you do is once you add 1 to that power, the answer in this case is going to be 2. You're going to divide by that answer. Okay. So if this was 3, that would be 1 plus 3, that would be 4, and we would divide by 4. In this case, it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. We're going to divide by 2. So that's what we're doing right here. It's going to be 5 thirds x, 1 plus 1, which of course is 2. We're going to divide by 2. So now I just got to clean this up. So I have 5 thirds x, 1 plus 1, which is of course x squared. Okay. So x to the 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we have 5 thirds x squared over 2. So we're going to clean this up. Use our awesome algebra skills to clean this up, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next, okay? All right, so here we go. 5 thirds x squared divided by 2 is the same thing as 5 thirds x squared uh, divided by 2. I can write it this way. It's a little complex fraction, which is 5 thirds x squared times 1 half. Hopefully, you know, you know how to deal with fractions. Divided by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So now that leaves you with 5 x squared over 6. Okay, remember we're multiplying fractions across. There you go. This is what we have now, okay? So I, I went from, I left I, um, for our integral, okay? I got this thing out of the integral to this thing, okay? All right, what do I do with this? Well, let's recall back with this little integration right here. We have to uh, now use our 0 and 3. Now that we got out of the integral, we have to use our 0 and 3 boundaries of this triangle. We're going to do that now, and when we do this, we will actually get the answer. Okay, so here's how this works. Um, kind of write it like this in calculus. We have this 5x squared over 6. Now we want to comp actually compute the area from 0 to 3. Now what we do is we write this expression, uh, we write this expression twice, and we subtract it from itself. Okay, so it's 5x squared uh, over 6 minus 5 x squared over 6, but let's go over here, and remember, we had this little integral from 0 to 3, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to take this 3, and you're going to replace this x, you're going to plug in 3 for it, okay, for this first one. And then this second one, whatever this number was, you're going to replace it right there. This is how we actually compute the, the area. After we do, after we get out of the integral, we go to this step, now we're going to plug in our little um, boundaries right here, and we'll get the actual answer. So let's just take a look at when we plug in 0 right here. When I plug in 0, 0 squared is going to be 0, 5 times 0. This whole thing is going to be 0. So in this particular problem, this is going to go away. So now I just have to uh, figure out what this is going to be when I plug in 3. Okay, so let's plug in 3 right now. And when I do that, I'm going to get the actual area. Okay, so remember, this is 5x squared over 6. I'm replacing that 3 right here. I mean, I'm sorry, this x with 3. So 3 squared is 5 times 9. 3 squared is 9 over 6. Here I can just do some awesome cross-canceling. 3 goes into two, uh, 6, 2. 3 goes into 9, 3. So that's 5 times 3 over 2. And this uh, should look pretty familiar to you. 15 over 2. This is the area. Okay, we just computed the area using calculus. And, uh, you know, if you understood, at least generally, okay, what's going on or got like some basic sense of this, well, you just did a calculus problem. Okay, we just used uh, 
integration, that is what this is called, uh, to find the area of this triangle using calculus. Okay, and uh, hopefully you said, oh, that was pretty cool, but why would I need to do that? I don't want to use all that calculus. I just want to use my awesome little formula right here. Okay, well, I would agree with you in this case. Let's erase this. But uh, although the formula went out in this particular problem, calculus is like saying, okay, well, you, maybe you won this contest. Well, let's go and erase this. But how about this? Okay, how about if I had something like that? Okay, and, and calculus would be like, all right, uh, Mr. Formula, let's go ahead and have another competition. This is from negative 4 to, let's say, 6. And here's some function. Okay, go ahead and find the area using your formula versus calculus. So calculus would be laughing because there is no formula, okay? You couldn't even have a competition because there is no formula for the area of this crazy little figure right here, okay? Uh, so calculus just wins every time, and that's why we need calculus. So in this case, we would go from negative four to six, whatever this function is right here, f of x, whatever uh, the function describing this curve is, and we would get the actual area right here, okay? Now, of course, we would have to go through a similar uh, process, you know, of adding the powers and doing all the calculations, but this is the real essence and power of calculus. Now, there's um, another uh, awesome component of calculus called uh, the derivative, but this is basic calculus, okay? It's, it's awesome math, and it's not, you know, at least the big picture concepts aren't beyond anyone's ability to learn. Okay, so if you've ever wondered about calculus, well, you just got a pretty good sense of what it's about, okay? And I would encourage you to maybe, um, you know, progress towards, if you're interested in taking calculus, I would say definitely take it. It's a mind-blowing course. Uh, you, you definitely have to be prepared to take it. You need strong algebra and uh, trigonometry skills for sure to be successful in calculus, but all this stuff you can learn step by step. But if this particular video was interesting enough for you to like the smash, uh, like the uh, this concept. Well, then please consider smashing that like button. That's why I make these videos to try to get you, you know, interested in mathematics. Try to teach you a little bit, obviously, about math. That's the you know, overarching uh, goal. But uh, really to get you motivated and, um, you know, to take away any uh, fear factor in terms of math. Everybody can do great in mathematics, but you got to work hard. You got to do your part. You got to take notes and just, you know, learn these things one skill at a time. Okay. And that's what I am here to do. Um, uh, if you are new to my YouTube channel, okay, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube, uh, for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So my goal is, uh, again, to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. My best math help, however, will be within my math help program. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.